fundraising part actually seems like the easiest. The fundraising, honestly, like it was. So when we did, we have a, we have a fund and uh, which we raised during COVID just because we thought we were going to get mobbed. And it was really weird. We actually, Mob, COVID was in, like, like thought we thought we were going to have, no, no, we thought we were going to have like overwhelming amounts of deals to do. And we thought it would be a great time to have excess capital. And uh, that didn't happen, right? Everyone was actually weirdly optimistic and the government wrote the check and all that stuff. But um, but doing doing the money raising wasn't actually that hard. Like running an agency for or owning an agency for 15 years and doing sales for a long time, like that's easy. You just have a fun conversation with someone, you walk them through a deck, you point to your track record. That that was totally fine. The hard part is really the execution of the actual deals and hiring the right people. And I would argue, I mean, I don't know really what I'm talking about entirely. This is strictly from reading. It seems like executing the deals is hard, but it's not that hard. The hard part is really the people part. Is totally. that? We, and, we, I w- we've done deals. We just did our biggest deal ever. Um, and it was over $100 million. And it was no more work or complexity than doing a $1 million deal. In, in fact, it was simpler than a $1 million deal because it's just a better business with a better team in place and more momentum. What the did hard you do? part is always complicated people. Uh, well, in our in our public company, we bought a company called Stamp, which is one of the top ratings and reviews apps on Shopify. Um, you bought it we for just closed that deal. Dollars? It was a, a hundred and hundred and ten, I believe, total. Uh, it gets paid out. It's a structure you'd have to look at the press release for the exact structure, but wow. yeah, it's in and around there. And when I was reading this, I'm in the middle of reading um, "Human Nature" by Robert Greene. And the reason, have you heard of that? It's an amazing book. I've been reading that too. Have you really? Wow. It's okay, amazing. Cool. Isn't it crazy? It's so yes. good. It's so everything he does is great. And the, the reason, laws, the laws of human nature, isn't it called? The, right? Yeah. The laws of human nature. And I already read it and now I'm rereading it again, but I'm studying it. Like I was like, I'm taking a semester of Robert Green. And the reason why I am reading it is because I thought that when I was getting into business, all that would matter is like business. And you're like, well, what's business? It's like, I don't know. Um, uh, like, I guess selling stuff, making the product really good. Um, in my business, it was like, I'm just going to write words that people like. Like, it's really simple. But what I've learned is it's far more important to understand and motivate human beings and have really effective day-to-day interactions with people. And in order to do that, you have to have a little bit of a, I'll call it like a Machiavellian type of thing to you where like people love you, yet they're far, a little bit fearful of you. They kind of view you as like a little bit of mysterious, like you have to attract these people and they have to both want to be around you yet think that you're formidable and be a little bit like nervous of like, Oh man, if I don't join this person, they're going to crush me. Or and live like, up to your expectations. What do you mean? Well, like basically how do you, one of the thing, like some of the, some people I've worked with have this thing where you just want, you always want to raise the bar and you always want to live up to their expectations. So they say, this is the bar. This is what I expect from you. But they do it in a very flattering way. Like you're really smart. You work really hard. I'm so impressed with you. I know you can achieve this, right? And then they set this crazy bar, and you just naturally want to live up to the expectations. And I, I've always struggled you? with that. Uh, well, just different different partner business partners and stuff I've dealt with over the last couple of years. Um, but but uh, like with employees and stuff, I've always had this habit of wanting to be liked. And I still want to be liked, but I want to be firm and I want to have boundaries because in the past, what I've done is in wanting to be liked, I've excused like somebody failing and said like, it's okay. Don't worry about it. It's fine. And then I'd quietly just dismiss them and then not use them for tasks like that. Whereas I think it's actually really important to be like, Hey, look, like it's okay. You effed up, but like you let me down and here's why you let me down and here's how this impacted everything. Or here's the bar and here's how what I need from you and whatever it is. And I, I've always been terrible at that. It's crazy. I mean, Elon Musk has it. Bill Ackman, who you know, has it. This guy who we're talking about, he definitely had it. When I looked at him and I like would see how he would dress and how he held himself, uh, you know, Travis Kalanick kind of has it where they're just like, you're just, you're afraid of them in a way of like, they inspire me, but like um, they they can crush it. Like the, the, totally. whatever they whatever they set their mind to, they're going to get done, and that's regardless if you agree with their ethics or not. But you definitely could agree that like these guys are going to they're going places. There's, and, there's, there's a great story about uh, Cheryl Sandberg at Facebook. I forget who who told this story, but she goes, "I was in a meeting with Cheryl, 
and I, you know, I gave this presentation and then she walked to me outside and she said, during your presentation, it was great, but you kept saying like, only stupid people say like, and you're not stupid. And then she walked away. Right. And you can look at that and go, oh my God, I can't believe she did that. That's so mean. But the way she told it was like, it was a kind of a backhanded compliment that told her something that was embarrassing. It's like saying like, hey, you have like, you know, you have lettuce in your teeth or whatever. You don't want to hear it, but like it's helpful. And I think I've been very bad at that kind of stuff. I think you need to give more firm feedback. 